So I'm super excited about this week's question. I feel like this question was made for me. Sorry about my camera. Um, we asked you guys to tell us what is your unpopular comic book opinion? Your hottest take, something that you feel for a fact you're the only person that feels that way. Uh, we're all going <laughs> to yell into the void together. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Which is ripe for this show. So let's do it. All right. So here's what you guys said. Harley said Thanos was better written in the late 90s, 2000, early 2000s as a true neutral, let the hmm. character evolve. Hmm. Cliff says Superior was the last cool thing that happened to Spider-Man. Oh, God. Ooh, I don't know. You know, I got to be honest. I think the last time last time I read Spider-Man for like a full arc was actually Superior, so I might have to co-sign that one. Ooh. <laughs> All right, Jason says, Tom King had an excellent Batman run. His work was the perfect complement to Snyder's loud take. Mm. Sean said, Neil Gaiman Salmon is massively overrated and held up in adoration by pretentious comic book snobs. <laughs> oh my God. You are the only one on that. <laughs> That's so impressive. Yeah, I'm like, I've like I've read all of like one trade of Sandman and even I was kind of, and it wasn't because it was bad. Like I just got distracted, but like, I remember reading the first trade and being like, Damn it, this is good. I didn't want it to be good. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, that's Sam Keith art, man. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Mike says, everything Grant Morrison has written since New X-Men has been hot garbage. That was his piece. Boo, <laughs> Mike, get out of here. <laughs> Boo, <laughs> Mike. What is the last thing? Mike, he made All-Star Superman after that. Get out of here, Mike. What is wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> the hottest take. <laughs> uh, Utah McMath says, OMJ here it comes. I did not like Saga. Probably I must mm. try once again because I tried it many times. Okay, now please be gentle with me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's another one that I kind of picked up and then kind of put down. And it wasn't because it was bad. Like, I think mm. I, I can recognize when something's good, but maybe not necessarily something that's going to keep me reading every month. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. That was just me. So you're not alone. Un comics moss. You're not, you're not alone. Uh, so Eli, since you're our mm -hmm. special guest and because I want to give Ashton room here to go off, you want to, you want to kick off our conversation of your hot take, your, your, the one thing that you have to say that you feel like uh, no one agrees with you, but you believe is so true. Well, I think this is a hot, the hottest take since I took my coffee off the coffee machine this morning. And that's, <laughs> that, uh, <laughs> and that's uh, that I don't think story matters. It's the mm. art that matters. It's the Ooh. art that makes it the comic. This is like what image started. Yeah. And if you don't believe me, then you might get burned because this takes <laughs> the scorching. <laughs> oh, OK. And that's just me, man. I just love the art. Mm -hmm. Like for me, it's what cements the whole thing mm -hmm. down. Yeah. You know, like even if the story is gripping and the art is like, not for me, then I'm going to be like, uh, I checked out. Mm, 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 okay. okay. That's just me. All right. No, I mean, that. look, I know there's a lot of people that feel that way. I know there's a lot of people in the group that feel that way, actually. So, yeah. All right. Uh, it's a hot take. It That's is a hot take. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> I right, do yeah. like story. That's not to say that I don't appreciate a, gr a good story, obviously. Dude. Yeah. No, no, I got you. Well, I mean, we've talked about this before. Like, I think, uh, you know, uh, artwork sells a comic. Like, that's probably right. the lesson from the 90s that we need to actually maintain and hold on to is that art is the thing that first thing that people you can you can you should be able to judge a comic book by its cover. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. and so uh yeah, I mean, I can understand why people feel that way, and it is an art form, which means that people come to it for mm -hmm. different reasons. So why not? All right, Ashton, what's this hot take? I feel like you you wound up something. You got something nice and wound up. I feel like well, that was a very abbreviated hot take from Eli, and uh, I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> Okay, so my hot take is Avatar related. Um, mm. So probably the most beloved of the Avatar um, sequel graphic novels, the sequel trilogy, whatever you want to call it, uh, mm. is the one called The Search, which is where they all kind of band together to go find Zuko's mom because she's kind of absent in the series. And it ends on a bit of a cliffhanger. Zuko goes into Ozai's cell after Aang defeats him, asks him where his mother is, and then it cuts away before you ever get an answer. So... Fast forward, they explore this in the graphic novel called The Search. I don't think that's necessary at all. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's great the way they did it. I'll, like, I'll, I mean, I'm going to negate myself a bit here in saying that, like, 
the explanation they give as to what happens to Zuko's mom is brilliant. It makes perfect sense within the world. It's really well done. Uh, it, it does a lot more character building on Zuko and also Azula, but it's just not necessary. I don't mm. think it is. I mm. think that like it, uh, certain cliffhangers are just there. Like think of like mm-hmm. the end of Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. Like it mm-hmm. ends on the ultimate oh, cliffhanger. Hey. And it creates like such a great conversation about did they, didn't they? And I think that was really effective the way they did it with Zuko's mom at the end of, of the series. You don't need to unpack it. Let it go. Like, did Ozai <laughs> kill her? Did he banish her? Like, is she in prison? It doesn't really matter where she is. I think that's part of the appeal. So it's like, you know, you don't need to take it extra step every single time. You just let no. it go and it's okay. No, no I think that, that something can really be said for that. I think it was just uh, just last week we were talking about uh, uh, redemption arcs, right? And we talked yeah. about how, like, the the biggest, well, I wouldn't say it's the biggest swing and a miss but it's definitely kind of like a eh, okay was anakin skywalker right like right. i mean it's just like you know maybe it would have been best to just kind of leave it at return of the jedi and then move on to something else you know what i mean like maybe we don't need to go back to the skywalker family over and over again and we're still still not learning that lesson apparently but don't get us started on that one <laughs> Mm-mm. Mm-mm. all damn day uh, all damn day <laughs> So yeah, I'm, I'm with you now. I'm a big, I'm a big, uh, I'm a big fan of like you know. Sometimes you get those uh, stories that end up in the air, which you know it sounds kind of silly, right? But like, that's uh, that's life. You know, sometimes you yeah. don't get all the answers. You know, and that in, and that in itself is a lesson worth telling in a story. So mm-hmm. there you go. Um, my hot take is a little. It's um, God, I, I it's not fully formed. I will definitely say that. Okay, but it's it's something that kind of was brought up recently again because the the showrunner of the boys made a comment that i'll get to in a second oh yeah um but i feel like we're still suffering this is my hot take i feel like we're still suffering for frederick frederick wortham's nonsense i feel like the comic industry is still like under the thumb of of scrutiny that frederick wortham started and i feel like no other art form no other medium gets the type of uh of bile thrown at it by mm-hmm. mainstream or popular culture the way the comics do a lot of times and you know and i'm probably i'm sure if i thought about that more it's probably something worse but at the mm-hmm. same time you know i just see it so consistently with comics and like it makes me wonder so i mean like of course right okay frederick wortham right uh made a bunch of assumptions about the content of comic books in the late 50s it was at the height of the red scare um and a lot of uh of uh a lot of frederick wortham's talking points were uh uh, women didn't behave like women uh homoeroticism was uh rampant throughout the comics and uh it it taught children how to be juvenile delinquents right that was Love the whole that. thing, right? Um, and so the comic book, su- comic book industry suffered f- for that for, I want to say, roughly about, well, I guess I guess you could say technically 10 years, because then after about somewhere around the Marvel age, right, these like some of these, uh, these ideas got thrown away. But we didn't really stop uh, dealing with Frederick Wortham's, Wortham's nonsense officially until they actually threw out the Comics Code Authority in the 2000s. Um, but uh, I kind of feel that still there's this thing in the mainstream that's sort of like comic books are garbage. And I know like a lot of indie mm-hmm. people will kind of like take what I'm going to say next is like, well, he's talking about superheroes, not talking about comic books, but it affects you too. Because ultimately in the mainstream and popular culture, when people think about comics, they think about superheroes. Is that fair? No. But at the same time, that's just how it is. So mm-hmm. I'm just going to say real quick, this is what he did. Like he basically made this comment uh, the showrunner of, of uh, the boys made a comment about uh, his name is Eric Kripke, Kripke, and he basically said that uh, all superheroes are here to protect white patriarch America, and oh. that's why, they, and that's what they were designed to do. Now look, we talked oh. about this a few weeks ago when we did the whole our superheroes fascist thing, right? Um, and I think we already, we, you, we, uh, Eli might not have seen the episode, but Ash and I know where we stand on this, which is like this is kind of nonsense, right? Yeah. Um, and, and Alan Moore made a similar accusation just a week prior which is why i'm so still kind of hot on this um but look you know anybody who's read a comic in the last i want to say god like 
20, 30, 40 years will can tell you that like, no, that's not the case. There are various nuances to how mm -hmm. these characters uh, uh, work, uh, uh, defeat crime, how they handle crime. Um, and they are constantly evolving that. And it's never been so cut and dry. It hasn't been cut and dry at least since the 60s, mm -hmm. I want to say. Mm -hmm. And the fact that uh, uh, even from a guy who's doing a show based on a comic book, he still says that. You know what I mean? It's just like, come on, dude, really? And it just kind of has gotten me to the point where I'm starting to think, and again, it's not a fully formed idea, but it's a hot take, so it doesn't have to be. Um, but I've gotten to the point where I'm starting to think like, dude, like, are is this just still, are we still like in the muck of Frederick Wortham's like bias towards comics that people still are just kind of have like this weird like disdain for the format? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So... That's that's me. That's that's my hot take. And uh, superheroes aren't fascists. That's uh that's what I'm here to say. <laughs> that's a wrap up. <laughs> so anyway, I don't know if you guys want to follow up on any of this or anything you guys said or anything like that. I uh, Eli, I, I like I said, I, I see your point. I don't think you're necessarily correct, but I see your point. <laughs> Um, I think maybe coming from an artist's perspective myself. Right. Yeah. Of course. I'm an artist. I, I'm also a writer, but it's mm -hmm. just like. For for me, that's how it was, and uh, I'm trying to be I'm trying to be racy here. I'm trying to be uh, yeah. you know, hot here. Oh, those are fighting words from Dr. Ben Anthony. Hey, now uh -oh. he's an what artist too. <laughs> what ben Anthony said, "What there are those are fighting words." Yeah, there you go. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, hey, you know what? Take it up in the cartoon. No, please don't go to the cartoonist cave, Ava, Facebook. <laughs> Start, that Start yelling at people. <laughs> <laughs> I think to your point, Troy, like uh, some people like have a view of comics that's stuck in one place too. Yeah. It's like mm -hmm. maybe Kripke doesn't read as much comics as we do and doesn't yeah. realize that mm -hmm. these characters have grown far beyond these initial paths that were set out for him, you know? And like even a character that is so like basic like superman sorry dad my dad loves superman but he's like the <laughs> most basic character you know yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. but like even he has gone through stuff you know thank you grant morrison and these other great writers but yeah. even superman has grown beyond the point of just being like this like white patriarchal yeah. like thing you know right and it's just like and i think that's maybe i think you actually put it perfectly it's just that people's opinion of comic books is stuck in time. And I think that time is the late fifties <laughs> during, yeah, yeah. during Frederick Wortham's heyday. Mm -hmm. Like part of that too, though, is like having like a stagnant opinion on comic books is that people that aren't in the comic book community or aren't comic book readers are getting fed certain like perspectives on it that are yeah. very stagnant. That like, could, like you talked about with Troy, you hate Big Bang Theory because of the way they portray <laughs> right. like, the comic book community. But that's one of like- that's yeah. a big piece of exposure that people yeah. have to the comic book community. And that's kind of feeding that same notion and it's all keeping it in the same place. Yeah, no, I think, I, no, and actually I think you have a great point there, which is that uh, it's, yeah, it's how these ideas are fed into the greater public, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that part of that is, you know, look, all the high and mighty people want to like prop up Watchmen. I own Watchmen. I know I own Absolute Watchmen. Like I, I actually own the movie because I think the movie's cool too. <laughs> like you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. um, but there, I think there's people that think that like oh, comic books, like you know the the perspective of superheroes that came from Watchmen is how all superhero books are really are, and that's what that mm -hmm. and that's what Alan Moore was saying. Which I don't think that's what Alan Moore was saying. And I also think that like you know if you watch certain superhero movies, if you watch a lot of superhero movies, I'd say. Be uh, previous to 2008, you might also carry that uh, that uh, logic, mm -hmm. which is like, you know, they're all fascist killers who beat up on criminals, and it's like, well, that's in the movie, so maybe that's a problem with Hollywood, but that's not a problem with comic right. books. You know what I mean? It's so. the kind of people that say my favorite comic book is Avengers Two: Rise of Ultron or whatever. Right, you know? <laughs> right. Exactly. Like their favorite comic is one of the movies, and it's like, well, then obviously you're not hip to all the like deepness that all these characters mm -hmm. have been through. Right, right. And like, you know, of course I'm, I'm talking about indie books as well, but that also extends to like, you know, superheroes, of course, you know, cause like you said, you've yeah. gotten so many great writers have come in and just kind of reworked these characters or recontextualize them for a new generation, mm -hmm. so. Don't forget that you can catch Previews World Weekly streaming live every Wednesday at 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific at Previews World on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. <laughs>